Hi Reed, good evening and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news. Lots to get into tonight. Martial's back in training. Paul Pogba misses the World Cup. Um, also, Manchester United announcing a pre-season friendly, um, which will take uh, place in December. It's a weird season. We'll talk about that. But we're going to hit off from the start here. You know me, I'm not, I'm not backwards at coming forwards. And, and I do feel that this is something that really needs hitting head on. Um, Soonus and Neville, Gar Goldbridge rant, I suppose, is the title of the show, I think. And uh, it's not, I mean, Gary Neville's a very separate separate issue here. I'm, I'm going to react to what Ronaldo said uh, after the game yesterday about Cristiano Ronaldo. It's, and it's a very different thing. But I've seen things today and I'm just getting a bit tired of it. Look, I, I think everybody's got the right to an opinion. I think sometimes in life you can say Harvey Barnes should be part of the England squad. It's a very divisive opinion. James Madison, maybe. Um, you know, that's an opinion. My opinion might be James Madison should go to the World Cup, yours should be. He doesn't go to the World Cup. And we can always hide behind, well, it's just my opinion. But I, I've heard things today. I've played the game. I've heard things today from Graham. Graham, I've played the game soonest. And I just think it's nonsense. I've also heard stuff from other ex-pundits. Uh, they should be ex-pundits, ex-players. And, and specifically about Martinez and Casemiro, which I just find absolutely redundant. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And we're going to delve into that tonight because I think enough is enough. And I think it's um, it's a really worthy topic, especially when... And I'll give you just... just Let me just say this and then we'll do the Boohoo Man thing and then we'll come back to it. I'm listening to the radio today. I'm coming back from doing a show with Ben Foster, an ex-player who actually I enjoy listening to, who I don't always agree with, but got good opinions. I've got talk sports on in the radio. I've got Simon Jordan, Graham Soonis and, and Jim White. And... Um, so then, uh, Gordon, uh, Graham, give us your team of the week. And he goes, Meslier in goal, Delo right back, Maguire. And then, I, and then he goes through the back four and Martinez isn't there. And I'm like, what, what, what are you on about Maguire over Martinez? I mean, so we'll, we'll get on to that. I don't mind Maguire being in team of the week, but you can't put Maguire in the team of the week and not put Martinez in there. And the stuff he said about Martinez... You're going to be fuming. You're going to be fuming. But before we get into that, uh, I've got to be fair. It is uh, uh, it is time for a bit of quiz uh, uh, trivia for Manchester United fans. And it's also time to give a shout out to our Monday night sponsor, which you'll know is Boohoo Man because I'm wearing my lovely autumnal uh, hoodie. I like a good hoodie, but the, the feel of this one, it just makes you want to go to bed in it. It's fantastic. Boohoo Man Active is all about looking good and feeling great. And as the weather gets cooler, you can get yourself some Boohoo Man Active range for running, five aside, or just chilling around the house like what I'm wearing. And because Boohoo Man are sponsoring the show, it means it's time for some Manchester United trivia. Again, this week, we are seeing if you guys can actively guess which United player or former player I'm talking about. So here we go. Born on the 1st of February, 1984 in Dorkeith, Scotland. I made my United debut on the 12th of March 2003 in a 1-1 draw against FC Basel. I played 233 games for Manchester United, scoring 18 goals. And during my United career, I won five Premier League titles, one FA Cup and a Champions League. That's not a bad CV. I'm currently Manchester United's technical director and trainer. Uh, who am I? Of course, you know who it is by now. Technical director currently. Five Premier League titles, one FA Cup and a Champions League. That's not a bad CV. Some people said I was Sir Alex Ferguson's stepson. I'm Darren Fletcher. Well done to everyone that got that one. As always, Boohoo Man, I've given United Stand a discount for you. Uh, scan the QR code next to me or go through the link in the description. You can get 40% off with the code GOLDBRIDGE. Um, link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. It will take you straight to the website. 40% off. They've got some fantastic stuff. Christmas is coming. You might want to treat yourself or start getting in some presents. Um, this hoodie is fantastic. I love the fact that it's red and black. United. But it's very, very comfortable. It's very, very comfortable. I wear it a lot. It's my morning top. You know when you get up in the morning in the autumn and it's a bit cold? I keep the pyjamas on and I slip this on and uh, it's, not, it's nice just to have a cup of tea and, and get away with the day. But enough of the relaxing... Uh, no, no. Thanks to Boohoo Man. Check it out. 40% off. But enough of that. Keep up the good works as Gabrielle. I'm going to get the temperature up without this top. It's not Nanny, says Hader. So, look, some people would say don't feed the trolls. Some people would say by talking about them, you're giving them what you want. And I think in the case of someone like a Gabby Agbonglahor, either, the, either it's just low IQ or it's scripted nonsense because he says it every week. And I, I heard him today... He does these little talk sport things where he has to pick between two things. Um, I literally think if you asked him on Monday, 
crunchy nut cornflakes or, or, or Weetabix, he'd say crunchy nut cornflakes. And if you asked him on Tuesday, he'd say Weetabix. That's Gabby Blongahor and some of the people they get on there. But um, look, I do my own show on Talk Sport, but you know, nothing against Talk Sport, but some of, them, some of the guests and some of the presenters are very basic football knowledge. I'm allowed to say that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, if they want to debate, let's have a debate. It won't be hard. I'll do it in my sleep. But he sits there today and he goes, Casemiro or Declan Rice? And he picks Declan Rice. And I'm like, that's not fit. That's not football opinion. That's stupid. That's not football opinion. You can't hide behind, well, that's my opinion. It has no place. I like Declan Rice. But when you have a choice between Declan Rice and Casemiro, you, you can't pick Declan Rice. You, unless you're a complete and utter class A gold-plated prat. You just can't do it. And you can't say, that's my opinion, because your opinion is 100% nonsense. I don't know what it is. Is it the passport, Premier League bias, whatever? But it's nonsense. You cannot say Declan Rice is better than Casemiro. Declan Rice wouldn't say he was better than Casemiro. Declan Rice's best mate wouldn't say he's better than Casemiro. Nobody would. Declan Rice's wife wouldn't say um, he's better than Casemiro. And, and I don't think he's even married. But you know what I mean? It, it, it's a non... You cannot, and we're going to go into this, you cannot, and I'm very protective of Man United players here, but I'd say on that's football if it was Declan Rice against Kimmich. It's Kimmich, Kimmich, Kimmich. We have... And that's not punditry. And I don't care whether you played the game. Your brain were in your feet then because it ends in your head. It's, it's a nonsense, and I, 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 I don't think it should exist. I don't think it should allow to be exist. I, I, think it's a, I think it's scary, because unfortunately, I think there are people out there that listen to it, and, and maybe, they, maybe they get swayed by it, and maybe they go to school and they say, I think Declan Rice is better than Casimir, and they get bullied. Or maybe down the pub after work, someone's heard it on Talk Sport, and they think, I want to be in the football gang, walks over there with a pint of beer and goes, how are we doing, lads? So Declan Rice is better than Casemiro. Pints on his head. It, 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 it's stupid, useless knowledge that will get you beat up. Like, you can't sit there and go, Declan Rice is better than Casemiro. Nobody can do it. There's, there, there are a few. Like I say, you could say, who's better, Saka or Rashford? You've got a debate going there. You know, you have. Edison or Allison, who's the better goalkeeper? You've got a debate going there. Who's the better right back, Reese James or Trent Alexander-Arnold? You've got a debate going there. But you cannot say Declan Rice or Casemiro, and you shouldn't be saying that on mainstream media. It, and, 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 and some people say, well, look, and I live in this world. I know you can do videos where you say Haaland's going to flop and make yourself look a prat but get loads of views. But it's, you're, being made, you, you're not, you're not going to get the rep reputation you want. People aren't going to go, remember that prat video he did? Oh, he actually knows what he's on about. You'll, re you'll, re you'll be remembered for the prat video because you've exposed yourself as a prat. And... You know, this is why you or others who are just fans have better opinions than ex-players because they are so tunnel visioned with their bias and agenda that they think they know better than you because they played the game. And then they come out with stuff like Declan Rice is better than Casemiro. It's dangerous. It should be sackable. It's nonsense. And I'm, I'm tired of it because... You know, we as football fans get so much criticism, so much criticism. And we're not right. We're not right about a lot of things. We're opinionated, but it comes from a good place of actually watching games of football. And then you turn the radio on, on because there's nothing else on. You want to talk, you want to listen about football. And you've got somebody selling you that Declan Rice is better than Casemiro. And, it, and, it, and it's, you know, that's not opinion. And I'm going to call it out because it's not opinion. It's nonsense. I think there is just extra bias towards English players, just like Maguire's better than Martinez and Rice is better than Cam Casemiro, says Anshul. All biases aside, I like Declan Rice, but Casemiro is on another level. I love Declan Rice, Stephen. I think he's a fantastic player. I think he is a fantastic player. But I'm, I'm trying to think of something, you know, that's not disrespectful in, in the gap that there is between Casemiro, the five-time Champions League winner who may well win the World Cup this summer and is one of the best midfielders there's ever been and played in the best midfield three we've probably seen in the last 20 years, apart from maybe Busquets, Xavi and Iniesta with Casemiro, Modric and Cruz and, and Declan Rice, who's still playing for West Ham. I mean, the clue is there straight away. He's still playing for West Ham. Casemiro has been playing for Real Madrid and now Manchester United. Um, but look, I like Declan Rice and it's not fair that he gets thrown into that conversation. But it gets better. I wasn't going to talk about that. And, and honestly, 
Honestly, I think that sort of opinion is sackable. I do. I, th I don't think that's opinion. I think it is so riddled with bias and nonsense. And I would actually be saying to that person, do you watch football? Yeah. No, do you watch football? Do you, 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 anyone can turn the TV and the football's on, but do you watch football? Because I'm really worried about your football IQ if you don't appreciate what Casemiro is. You basically just smile when the goal's going, don't you? And then you're daydreaming through, for the rest of 89 minutes. Um, but look, I want to talk about Sunus as well, because this was the one that I really wanted to get into. Mark, you're the best. It's difficult to go through a day without listening to you, says Rimbic. Thank you, and do get your comments in. Susan, Sunus even admitted live on air he didn't watch the second half, yet he's throwing out nonsense and getting paid for it, says Luke Evans. I mean, this is, this, I'm, I'm thank you for that, Luke, because I think it starts to explain it. I don't think many ex-players watch football. I don't. I don't know whether it's because they're bitter and they, they, you know, they'd rather be doing something else or they don't think they need to watch it because they know what they're doing. You know, I often do this with Mrs. Goldbridge. She'll say, I'm going out. Can you empty the dishwasher, put the heating on, put the dinner, uh, put the dinner in and do this? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say? I know what you said because I, you say it every time you go out. Come back, guarantee I've not done two of the three things she's asked me to do. And I think maybe the ex-footballers like that. I've played the game. I, I, I don't need people telling me or watch. I, 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 I'll just watch it on match of the day. I don't need to watch 90 minutes. I think people. I think that happens. In, in, in professional punditry, I'm convinced that they don't watch the games because I think they expose themselves every time they talk about a game that they've supposedly watched. So I'm listening to Graeme Souness today. And there's three big things. First of all, he says about Martinez. These are his words. Um, he's not terribly quick. Uh, he's not terribly good on the ball um, and uh, he will get caught out. And um, what else did he say? Um, not terribly quick, not not terribly good on the ball. And he, and, and he will get caught out because of his lack of height. This isn't at the start of the season. This is, this is today. This is today, right? And I'm sat there and I'm not Martinez's mate or brother, but I am a Manchester United fan and I'm like, who do you think you are, Graham? Who do you think you are, Graham? Absolute nonsense. But then he goes and puts his team of the week where he gets some of them right. Meslier in goal, okay. I think he did okay against Leeds. I think De Gea was better, but okay. Delo at right back, well done. And then he's got bloody Maguire as one of the centre-backs, but Martinez isn't. I can't remember who his other centre-back was, by the way. Probably the Brighton centre-back or something. In fact, who conceded five? He's probably got the Forest centre-back knowing him. Oh, he had a good game. I played the game. He's conceded five, but it wasn't. none of them are his fault. But he puts Harry Maguire in. I'm not taking a pop at Harry Maguire here at all, but what I'm saying is, if you're putting Harry Maguire at centre-back in Team of the Week and you're not putting Martinez in... That, to me, 100% stinks of what people have said about this with Pogba as well. There is a bias around British players over foreign players. And I don't know why that exists, but there very clearly is in this country some sort of weird bias around if, you're, if you've got a British passport over a foreign player. Because I don't care what anybody says. Harry Maguire played well in the last half an hour because we parked the bus and he's very good in that environment. We know that. But in the first half, when we were trying to press, he got exposed a few times. But Harry Maguire's played one game this season that we've won. He's only played in one game that we've won in the league. Martinez has played in all of them. And he was much better than Maguire yesterday. So how can you not put Martinez in Team of the Week, but put Maguire in there? And how can you then say, Maguire, Martinez isn't very quick, he's not that good on the ball, and he's going to get found out? You've not watched us play, Graham. And you're, like, you're not the only one, but you've not watched his playmates because he's absolutely sensational on the ball. Sensational. Probably the best ball-playing centre-back in the Premier League. He's basically a midfielder playing at centre-back. You haven't... You might have played the game, but you don't watch the game because you cannot... So look, you, you look, maybe he's not terribly fast. I, 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 and when, when Sooner says not terribly, it doesn't mean... They're not terrible, they're good. He means like they're not particularly. That's just his wording, right? So maybe Martinez isn't, isn't particularly quick. But you can't say he's not particularly quick, he's not particularly good on the ball. He's bloody brilliant on the ball. And you know what about Martinez? He's played with three different centre-backs in a week. Lindelof, Maguire and Varane. And his performance has not dropped. That's the mark of a good player. His concentration, organisation, his first... Two months in the Premier League. He's only been here for two, three months. And we're still getting mainstream media pundits 
putting it out there that Martinez ain't that good. He's getting away with it. He's going to get found out. There's six foot two strikers in this. Who's he got to play who's six foot two that he hasn't played already? Like, oh, oh my God, we've got Villa next week and they've got Danny Ings. Yeah, you know, oh, we've got Fulham and Mitrovic. I'm not saying that they won't score, but he's already played against the, the Jesus, Haaland, Kane. He's played against the best Premier League's in the league, strikers in the league. I can't believe, I can't believe that we are listening on mainstream media, on TV and radio, because Sunis is only one of them, Carragher's done it. I can't believe they are letting people because they used to play the game and paying them massive money to talk to the masses. Total nonsense. Total nonsense. And the one that get the two things that got me the most today and made me want to do a video about it was not putting him in team of the week, but putting Maguire in there is an absolute fraud job. And even Harry Maguire would say that. I'm not picking on Maguire at all. Maguire played well in the last 20 minutes. But Harry Maguire would say, you can't put me in if you're not putting Martinez in. You can't. You can't. Martinez was better than Maguire last, last, yesterday and he's been better than him all season. So that's some sort of weird bias. And then the second thing that really got my goat, if you haven't realised, is that he's not that good on the ball. Oh my God, are you listening on the radio for 10 minutes? Did you listen to the radio highlights? Because you aren't looking with your eyes. He's one of the best ball-playing uh, centre-backs in the league, 100%. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant at it. It's probably his best thing. He's so good. He's so good on the ball. So, it's, you know, actually, um, again, you've got bloody Jim and Dorothy driving back from the grandkids on a Monday morning. They've been to the, you know, they've been to the, 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 the daughter's house. They've seen the grandkids. They've had a great weekend. Uh, Dorothy's enjoyed herself. And Jim says, can I put the radio on? I want to listen to talk sport. I really like Simon Jordan and Jim White. Yes, you can, Jim. Put it on. He puts it on and he's like, he's not seen any football. He's been busy all weekend. Oh, I tell you what, Harry Maguire had a great game. I'm, I'm really pleased for him because I love the British lads. And, and, and this Martinez, what, what, what's he all about? He's, Graham's saying he's no good on the ball. He, 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 he's small and, and he's not that big, Dorothy. Get, get rid of him, Jim. He's rubbish, that Martinez. Bring back Phil Jones. And The, the thing is, we're, we're, we're opinionated people. Most football fans are opinionated. But there are fans out there that will swallow that shit. And, and, and it needs calling out because it's wrong. It's like, watching, um, it's like watching the news and someone's telling you about something that's happened in a country and then they get the country wrong. It's, it's wrong. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You cannot sit there and say... It's like me saying to you, yeah, Erling Haaland's all right, but uh, he's a bit slow for me. Um, he's not that good at finishing and um, he's crap in the air. You'd go, that's what it's like. That's what Sunis is saying. Uh, Martinez isn't that good, not that good on the ball, not that good uh, with speed and, and, and he's going to get found out in the air. You've not watched the lad. You've not watched him. You've, spoke, you've exposed yourself. You'd never know that these are former professional footballers. I'd be embarrassed as Matty Rock. I think the fact that sometimes they are ex-footballers just makes them very lazy. I think they live off that. I, You know what? I can't knock on the door of Match of the Day and say, put me on on Saturday night unless I've played in the Premier League 300 times. Doesn't matter who I am. Doesn't matter who I've played for. If I've got a Premier League medal, all the better. Doesn't matter how thick I am. I've played the game, you know. Martinez is not good on the ball and yet he has played as a central midfielder for Ajax this team. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Hi, Mark. Maguire was bad yesterday. Defending was horrific and can only pass sideways or backwards, says Pally. People like Sunis are extremely dangerous as it's people like him that make us hate Maguire even more for all the undue credit they keep giving him. You know what, SK? I, I, I actually, over the years, I'm going to shock people here. I don't mind Sunis because he's, he, he stands his ground and sometimes I do agree with him. But he's another one of those people who sticks up for British players and by doing by he overhypes the British players and he undermines the foreign players. And that just comes across as what it is. It's 2022. I think in the mid-90s, if you're Alan Hansen or Jimmy Hill, you get away with that. You know, you are speaking to the masses and the masses can't speak back. You've got match of the day on a Sunday, Saturday night, you've got nothing else. The internet doesn't exist. So you've just got to take it. But now the internet exists, social media exists. We don't have to sit there and take this nonsense. 
And also, let me just say, he spoke about um, Casemiro. And this is what he said about Casemiro. Um, I don't see him as a great player. I see him as a good player. Um, he's a good steady Eddie. Uh, good, not great. Seven and a half each week. You've just, you've just spoken about the best CDM in the world. Arguably. You know, he's, he's a good player. He's not a great player. He's a steady Eddie. Seven and a half a week. Now, he's not saying Casemiro shit. He's not saying Casemiro shit. I'm not saying that. But he's just described him as a seven and a half, seven and a half each week. He's just described Casemiro as Xhaka. <laughs> and Arsenal fans will be saying Xhaka is better than, better than Casemiro because that's what Arsenal fans do. But educated Arsenal fans don't. He's just described... Look, seven and a half every week is fine. It is steady Eddie. But it ain't Casemiro. Casemiro is not a steady Eddie. Ste you know, Casemiro is not Xhaka. Casemiro is not Sushek. These are steady Eddie players. You know, Casemiro is not Ndidi. Casemiro is not... Um, you know, give me some examples of steady Eddies. We're not talking about average. We're talking about seven and a half. Good players each week. But that's their ceiling. He's basically describing Casemiro as a good player and, that's it, and not a great player. <laughs> Where do I start? Again, how can you say that? Again... If I say to you, um, you know, I, I think that um, Cristiano Ronaldo is better than Messi, we're going to have a debate. But you can't say that Casemiro is a good player and not a great player. It's not an opinion. And again, it's coming from somebody I don't think watches the game. Martinez is actually fast. All right, he's not Varane or Van Disney, but he's still quick. Again, I agree with Daniel. Soon as bias comes from an inferior and jealousy complex from his playing time abroad where the local media would have put him down, says Niki. Uh, if Lissandro Martinez was Lee Martin, he'd be on track for Ballon d'Or, according to Soonis. And uh, I think former players like players who remind them of themselves to help them relive their playing days, says Uber Mellon. And Martinez reads the game brilliantly. He's quick, he's aggressive and has had some strikers in his pocket this season. Soonest chats junk, says Andy. Look, I know we've spoken about Graham Soonest a lot here, but I haven't seen an apology from Jamie Carragher about it. And you know what? This is the second thing I want to say. Look, Soonest has got it. A Bong Lavos had it. We spoke a bit about Carragher. There's loads more. Unfortunately, this is not just the um this not just an isolated incident. It happens, it's happening all the time. We saw it with Anthony last week with a few players having a pop at him. It's happening every week and it's tiring. And I'm only going to defend United players because I'm a United fan and you're United fans, but it's happening every week. I've said this about Mo Salah. I think Mo Salah is one of the best players in the world and has been for years. I don't think he gets treated like that. I don't think I don't know whether it's because he's from Egypt, but I think if his name was Martin Sale, I think he'd be, you know, the best player in the world. I, I think that at some point we've got to start realising that the Premier League is rich and, um, you know, diverse and has been for 20 years because of the influx of foreign players and managers. If you want to support England in the World Cup, the World Cup comes around every four years and the Euros comes around every four years as well. But I'm not supporting England in the Premier League. Somebody said to me today that we, we fielded an, a non-English Man United side. I felt no different to when we played with seven or eight English players. I want Manchester United to win. All my life we've had players that weren't English that I've loved. Whether it's people like Van Persie, Ronaldo, Roy Keane, um, Schmeichel, Van Nisseroy. The list goes on and on and on. I'm not interested in this bias and I don't know why our media rams this bias down our throat. Journalists do it as well. But also I think there's an element of, and somebody hits on it there. Um, Aram says, at what point does it become xenophobia? Well, I'm not really interested in throwing that sort of thing around. My crusade tonight is to say it's dangerous to be talking shit, as I know. But it's I, I think I do talk shit. I think we all do. But I don't think I talk a lot of shit to that level. I don't think I would sit here and talk about um, somebody like, I don't know, Gabriel Jesus and say, yeah, he's got a terrible first touch, he can't dribble, his finishing is absolutely diabolical and I'd rather play Peter Crouch in his 40s than him up front. That's the sort of stuff we're getting on mainstream media, equivalent of. Such and such can't pass out from the back. Such and such is a steady eddy. And you know what? I think it's ignorance. I think it's bias. And I think it's arrogance. And the arrogance thing reads moves us away here because 
I don't think Jamie Carragher wants to come out and say he got it wrong about Martinez because he doesn't want to say he got it wrong because it's arrogance. I don't want to be wrong. I'm more than happy to criticise Ronaldo for the last year. I'm more than happy to say Martinez is too small, but I'm never going to come out and say I got it wrong about those players because I don't want to. I want to be right. Look at Gary Neville last night. I don't know whether you saw the clip from Mika Richards. Um, Mika Richards goes up to him with his mobile phone after the game last night and says, ha ha, you got snubbed by Ronaldo. To which he's in a lift with Roy Keane and he's like, well, I can't believe that Ronaldo would spend, you know, he must watch me then. You know, if I had 500 million followers on Instagram, I wouldn't be watching me. And and then Mika Richards says, yeah, but he's, you're one of his teammates. And he goes, well, he's not behaving like he's played with me in the past or, or with Roy, has he? And I'm like, does that not display the problem with some of these ex-players? It's pure arrogance. It's like, I can say what I like, but I'm not going to apologise for it. I'm not going to own it. And, you know, where is the apology to Martinez? I mean, Martinez isn't just an our signing of the summer. He's probably a signing of the summer. The only one that's, I can think is, that a, is, is better is Haaland. Like, Martinez is one of the signings of the summer. Not in the Premier League, in the world. And yet he's not had an apology for the ignorant people who'd never seen him play and just saw his height. Like we literally had, and you might not have seen it because you might not live in the UK, Martinez came and, and played his debut and some of our elite pundits basically told the world he's too small for the Premier League. He's probably been the best centre-back in the Premier League with Saliba uh, this season. We've not had an apology that, you know, I was heightest. And it needs calling out. I'm sorry. I think I think at some point it's pantomime and at some point it's laughable and then at some point it goes too far and it has to be called out. And I, I don't normally do that in a serious way, but I felt today the barrage of shit I was listening to and reading and, and the arrogance, I just thought, you know what? Hey, our door's always open. If someone clips this up and they see it, they won't do anything because they're scared. But if they ever want one of those debates, let's have it. It's not personal. But I won't get that debate because they won't put themselves in that position because they wouldn't put that in the position with you because you'd sit there and go, you're not watching the game, are you? You can't say that he's too small for the Premier League because he's proved you wrong. You're just waiting for one game where he gets beat in the air and you'll say you were right. Well, one, one, one sunny day doesn't make a summer. Martinez has already proved you wrong. If Martinez gets beaten in the air next at Villa, that doesn't make you right because he's already proven that he can beat people in the air, that he can pass out from the back, that he can lead that defence. You're already wrong. Own it, apologise and leave the guy alone. You can't say that Casemiro is a steady Eddie. He's already one of the greatest midfielders of the last decade. He's not a steady Eddie. You're wrong. Fact. This is not opinion. That is, this is fact. This is fact. And... Sometimes opinions are facts. And, and, and I know people don't understand that sometimes because football's about opinion. But you can't say Cristiano Ronaldo was just a Portuguese um, Kevin Phillips or a, you know, a Portuguese Lacazette. He was overrated. He wasn't that good in the air and he's finishing. He was lucky with most of his shots. You can't. There is a fact that Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Some things in football are fact. You can't spin an opinion on, on those things. I can't sit here and say to you, no matter how much I want to, that uh, Man City are, are, are just jammy. You know, they only win every week because the they buy the reps. They play shit football. They're lucky and they scam their way. You know, the, 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 I can't say that. They're one of the best teams the Premier League's ever had. So <laughs> some things are fact and some things are opinion. And some things you can really debate about and some things you can't. I just feel that, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And it needs to be called out because, it, you know, we, we are being we are being spoon fed nonsense every day by uneducated, naive, arrogant ex-players. And I don't like saying those words because they are quite, you know, blunt. But the evidence is there. The evidence is there. You know, and Gary clearly didn't like getting snubbed by Ronaldo yesterday, but maybe Ronaldo didn't like being hearing that United are better off without him. Cuts both ways, doesn't it? If I'm walking down the street, I don't think Scott McTominay's going to run and give me a hug. 
I like McTominay. I think he's had a good season, but he might go. I didn't like the fact that you said I was crap, but I thought you were. I'll own it. Let's be friends now. Don't want to. Scooby-Doo. All right, bye. Um, at what point... Yeah, so thank you for that. I, I, I just think... It's just, it, it just, it's just really pissed me off today. Really has pissed me off because I think it's disgusting. I think it's disgusting in the case of Lissandro Martinez who has only played in the Premier League for three months and um, is one of the best ball-playing centre-backs we've ever had who's playing with a different centre-back every game at the moment and is never dropping off at all, whose motivation, passion, concentration is absolutely on it. And he can't cut a break from these people who have loads of people listening to them. And, you know, you know what pisses me off as well is when people don't get the praise they deserve. That is one of the things I hate. I hate manipulators. I hate manipulators. I hate bullies and I hate manipulators. And... As I said, Jim and Dorothy are driving back in the radio this morning. They've not watched. They've not watched anything this weekend. And Graham Soonest does his team of the week, and it's got Maguire in it, and it hasn't got Martinez in it. And Jim and Dorothy don't realise how good Martinez played, and they think Maguire's our best centre back. That I, I hate that. I hate that because it's false reporting, and I don't know why it's false reporting. It might be low IQ or bias, but either way, that needs to call him out. It's like Gary last night gave Rashford man of the match. That's national TV. National TV giving Marcus Rashford the man of the match. Maybe Marcus is his best mate. Maybe it was sentimental because it was his 100th goal. Maybe he's English. I, you know, maybe it could be anything, but it's wrong. It's, it might be justifiable, but it's wrong. That's national TV coverage of Manchester United against West Ham and the pundits just giving it Marcus Rashford man of the match. It's wrong. It's not opinion. It's wrong. It's De Gea, it's De Lo, or it's Martinez in that order. It's not Marcus Rashford. And again, Rashford would know that. So I can't stand that because it, you know, and is it a coincidence that three of the players that should have got it are foreign and one of them's English? I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it's still wrong. And I think it does need to be called out. God, I get called out enough. I'm sure you get called off out when you're out with your mates and stuff for an opinion that people don't agree with. Um, Sooner should keep his five Champions League medals on the table before calling Casemiro not great. Uh, says Anshul. Um, also, uh, you would think if you have a plum job as a football pundit, then you would try hard to have an informed opinion on the game, the players, says Stephen. I, I don't think they do, Stephen. Look, I've been around some of these players as well in these in environments. I don't think they're spending their weekend taking notes, watching football, analysing it. I just don't think they are. And if they are, I'd be very, very worried because they ain't watching it properly. Um, SK says Martinez is actually quick I'm yet to see the striker that outruns him also does soon as not see Martin, Martinez routinely dribble his way out of trouble says SK Ian Wright called them pundits out as lazy today says Andre and he's right he's right and not all pundits are bad but I think, they, I think they're taking a hell of a beating at the moment because I just don't think that, that, that they are in touch with the modern game I think that's a problem as well I think, football, I th I think they judge football on when they played um, we've seen that before. I mean, we, we had ex-United players recommending S Simeone as our manager. And they can only be doing that because they heard that Simeone's a good manager. They can't have watched Simeone's football because they'd never want him at Man United. So I think, I think, some, of this opinion, I think some of this opinion is lazy and therefore it is dangerous because it's ill-informed. I don't genuinely believe they, they, they have the knowledge that you have because I don't think they're watching the games or analysing the games or evolving with the game. And I don't know, because like, I respect these people. To be a professional footballer and, and, and have the careers they've had is the envy of all of us. But I don't think just because you're a good footballer, it makes you a good pundit. And I think we're seeing the evidence of that. Um, I think it's getting to the point where, you know, just because you uh, drove the school bus doesn't mean you can drive a Formula One car. I, I, I think that I, I, actually, I actually think we're starting to see a very clear piece of evidence that just because you played the game doesn't mean you're a good pundit which is weird because you'd think because they played the game they'd understand it and I you know I speak to Ben Foster every week and I think you know he's a specialist goalkeeper so he can talk to you about where the goalkeeper should have been passing out from the back what it's like in the dressing room there's definitely things that a player can give you but I think outfield play the game's moved on from when these people played I mean look that great side 1999 
they won't know how how teams are playing now. They wouldn't know what Brighton are doing. You know, it's it's 21 years ago. We've been through... What have we been through in 21 years? Sir Alex Ferguson in 99. The Wenger years were just starting then. Then you've got the, um, you know, the Pep years, the Mourinho years. Uh, there's more eras than that in that time. So football moves on. Uh, Casemiro, uh, did, I've done that one from Kay. Um, also, they obviously worried United might actually get in between their precious Liverpool and City, says Glenn. I, I think it's more than that as well. Ronaldo has been through a lot. This losing a child is not easy, but how was Ronaldo supposed to act if anything? Neville is a Judas because he doesn't have his back. He keeps knocking him down, says Victor. Look, I, mate, I, I, I've got to say there, I've got no problem with um, a Manchester United ex-player or fan or anybody saying that they think United are better off with Ronaldo without Ronaldo in the team. But if you say that publicly, especially to millions of people, it's not like it's not like Lee Holden saying. Shout out for Lee. Uh, it's not like Lee Holden saying I don't. I think United are better off without Ronaldo. I don't think Ronaldo would care about that. But I think when somebody who is being watched by millions says I think that Man United are better off without Ronaldo. I think Ronaldo's got every right to snub him. What? Why would? Why would you shake your? Why would you go up to him and shake his hand? Like what? Why? This is a professional sportsman who will be aware that an ex-teammate of his and somebody that many United fans respect has just said Manchester United are better off without him. People will hear Gary Neville say Man United are better off without Cristiano Ronaldo and they will, they will, they, that will sway them. I 100% believe that. So why would Ronaldo then go and shake his hand? Like If you're going to do the crime, you're going to do the time. And look, I'm sure Ronaldo and Gary Neville will sort it out. They shook hands when he snubbed Gary Carragher. But... I don't think it's that deep. I don't. And I, and I, and I think, you know, I, I, just, I just think the quality is terrible. When Casemiro signed, Suna said, I, you know what? I actually feel this. And I only say me because I do, you know, I stand, but it could be you. I genuinely think I could go on Monday Night Football or that show this morning with Simon Jordan, Jim White and Sunus, or Match of the Day I could sit down with Shearer and Wright. I could sit down with Simon Jordan, Sunus and Jim White. And I could sit down with Carragher and Neville. And all three of those scenarios, I haven't got a pot to piss in. I've never played the game at the higher level and I've never won a trophy or a Premier League or anything like that. But I guarantee on what we've just discussed there and the things they say about it, I win the argument. I win the argument. And they'll, you know what will happen? They'll all go, where's your medals? What, what level have you played at? And I'll go, that's all you've got, isn't it? All you've got is your Wikipedia page to try and defeat my knowledge of football against yours. But you're telling me that Casemiro's just bang average and I'm telling you he's world class. And you're telling me that United are better off without, without Ronaldo in it and I disagree. And I've got the evidence for it and you've got your opinion. And you're telling me that Declan Rice is better than Casemiro and you're just an absolute fool. And you're telling me that Martinez can't pass out from the back. And I'm going to tell you every game where he's done it and why he did it at Ajax as well. So... And you could do that. You could do that. And that's not right. But that's the world we live in now. I, I don't respect a lot of these opinions in the way that we maybe should do because I think it's poor opinion. Um, when Casemiro signed, Suna said he was an average player and Luca and Cruz made him look good. Yeah, he's, he's clearly not watched Real Madrid either. Uh, I stopped taking pundits seriously when Neville said Conte isn't a United manager, says Connor. I just think in general it's, um, it's disappointing. I don't think punditry, I don't think any punditry, whether it's politics, football, or or even movie reviews, should be political in the sense that it's bias. And and to be honest with you, I know pundits who are very good friends with certain footballers, and they never call them out. And and that's not that's not good, is it? You know, we crave in this modern world debate, and debate is only good if it's reasoned. Debate is flawed when it's biased or you know, I can't sit and talk about Marvel films. I can, but I'll get exposed. I'll get exposed. If they sat me down on a panel to talk about Marvel and I went, yeah, I quite like Iron Man, but I prefer Batman. I love, we should have an Iron Man versus Batman. I'd get slaughtered because I think that's a crossover that can't happen. And I'd get absolutely destroyed by people that are passionate about Marvel. And this is what we're getting subjected to as football fans. Why are football fans who love their sport passionately and spend all their time talking about it being fed crap by people who played the game, who know better than us? And they don't. They don't know better than us. So why are they sat there? If they don't know better than us and they're talking shit, why are they sat there 
being allowed to do it. And that's the great thing about what we have here, is we can call it out and say it, not how it is, but we can call it out and say, you know, it's not on. If you're going to talk about our players or anything about football, please do your homework because you're talking about a book you're not reading. You know, I'm listening to these people and they're giving me a, a, a you know, they, they, think that, that they think that they're watching bloody Bambi and they're watching Jaws. You know, they're, they're not talking about the right film. I love the bit when Bambi's mum died and the, and, and the recuperation of, you know, growing from a little deer into a big deer. Obviously, it was heartbreaking when Bambi's mum died, but he grew from that. And you're like, there's a fucking shark biting a boat. Where's Bambi and all this? You're talking about the wrong bloody film. And it, and it feels like that. Uh, you know, some of the descriptions I've seen of our players over the last few weeks, I'm like, what, what, what player are they watching? Do they think Martinez is somebody else? Is that, is that the problem? He can't pass out from the back. He's not very quick. He's not very good in the air. Do they think he's somebody else? Have they got mixed up with Martinez and bloody Phil Jones or something? I, I don't know what they're on about. Um, anyway, look, look, we've had our bit on that. Um, I basically missed a load of stuff I wanted to talk about tonight, but I suppose um, Gary Neville and his cohorts wanted to give Moyes all the time. They can't wait to stab Ten Hag and his team. Truly shameful, says Kate. No, you know, look, I don't mind Sooners some of the time and, you know, Gary Neville's never going to turn on Ten Hag. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. Sorry, Bambi's mum did die. I've spoiled it for you. About 30 years ago, probably more than that. Um, if you've not watched it now, you deserve it. You deserve a spoiler alert. But, um, you know, some of these pundits, look, they're not bad all the time, but when they're bad, they stink. I think Sooners wanted to be relevant calling out Ten Hag, but saying nothing about Gerard management with his 35% winning hypocrite. Says Jay. Look, that, you know what, Jay? We can't have a pop at Graham for that. We had a lot of Man United ex-players that sat there berating Mourinho week after week after week for two years. And then when Solskjaer was doing worse, it was like, I'm not going to say anything about my mates. That's not punditry. And, they were, and you know what? The bad thing about that is Sky and all these other people, they let them do that. They pay them all that money and they let them go, yeah, I know I've just spent the last five years slagging everybody off when they're not doing well. But, it, you know, I'm not going to do that even though I should do because he's my mate. That's, that, I, I, that should be in someone's contract. You can't do that. You can't sit there on national TV and say, I won't, I won't have a go at this person because he's my mate. I mean, it's up to them if they want to do it, but that shouldn't be being put out on TV. That's, that's not punditry, in my opinion. So Graham Soon is sticking up for Gerard. He, he's, not, he's not the only person who does that. It happens all the time. Um, not everyone has to press like crazy, but Ronaldo's pressing is such an outlier in a bad way that even his prodigious offensive skill don't overshadow it. Ronaldo would be great at Real Madrid now, says James Burris. Yeah, wasn't actually talking about Ronaldo, but there you go. Um, talking about the attack, though, two things to talk about. Topical. Anthony Martial is back in training. Good positive news, isn't it? Anthony Martial is back in training. Smile on his face. Doing the little ball drills today. Martial's back. Um, I've got the preview coming up for you for Sociedad tomorrow, so I won't delve into too much about that at all. But um, very interesting bit on Bruno I want to talk about tomorrow and the Ronaldo relationship and how they're not playing well together and why I think that is. But um, Martial's back. Good news. I suppose the question is, what do you do with Martial? Do you, and we said this the other day, do you throw him in for the last couple of weeks? Because um, we've got less than two weeks before the World Cup now. Um, our last game is a week on Sunday against Fulham. So we've got a week and a half, really. Do you, you do you bother even using Martial? Um, I certainly think it's a difficult decision because if you throw him in early and he breaks down again, he might be out for another two months. So difficult one with Martial, especially with uh, all the games that are coming. We need to win on Thursday and we need to beat Villa on Sunday. Amazes me how pundits know nothing beyond the Prem. Fans absorb info because we love it. They're lazy when they should be pinching themselves. I don't think they even watch the Prem, James. I don't think they watch the Prem. I can't watch Tim Sherwood or Soonest because it's more their opinion and no one else matters, says Robinson Crusoe. I think there's a lot of that. Um, and just talking about that, by the way, um, some of you may have missed this. Uh, please do smash a like on the video if you've enjoyed the show, by the way. Um, we've got a pre-season friendly, friendly that's been announced today on December the 7th. And I say pre-season friendly, it's a mid-season friendly. But of course, the World Cup's going to happen very soon. But Ten Hag and Man United are not going to stop. You're going to have Anthony Martial, David De Gea, Donny van der Beek, Jadon Sancho, 
um, and a few others who won't be part of the World Cup. And they don't just get six weeks off to eat celebrations and watch uh, repeats of Harry Potter. They will be training. So Manchester United won't only be training. They're going to play some de- some games. They've got two games lined up. They've got a week in Spain lined up as a you know bit of a training camp. We are playing Cadiz um, on the 7th of December in a pre-season friendly or a mid-season friendly, which will be on MUTV. So uh, we will not go six weeks without watching Manchester United because we'll play Fulham on the 12th and then four weeks later we're playing uh, Cadiz and then we've got another game and then we'll be back for Boxing Day. So that be quite... In- I'm sure, look, I'll be doing the watch along for it. I'm sure some of you will be watching it as well. But uh, it's quite interesting that uh, that was announced today that United will be um, doing that. It's like what Red Bull did during the weekend with Sky. They were sick of their crap. Why can't more players and managers do that? Says Barry. And I cut, yeah, thank you very much for that, Barry, as well. Um, Jimmy Ward says he's been laughing a lot. I'm going to have to watch this show back because I've had, uh, I know I've been moaning about quite a lot on the show today, but I felt it needed saying. I'm I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. You know what? I get clipped up more than a bloody, um, something that gets clipped, than a hedge. I do. I get taken out of context. I put my hands up. Sometimes I talk shit. But sometimes I'm, at least I'm actually watching the game. One thing people can never say is that I don't watch the game. I, you know, some people do actually. On Twitter, I'll put an opinion out and people will go, you didn't even watch the game. And I'll go, yeah, there was 40,000 people watching it with me. And when you're watching the game, people can never say you didn't watch the game because you, you know, you watch it. You might have a different opinion. You might have a bad take, but you watch it. And then you're passionate. And sometimes you react to something and, you know. So, look, nobody can ever say that I don't give out what I receive. Um, I get a lot of stick. I get clipped up unfairly and sometimes I talk shit. And you've got to, you've got to take that. And I've got have I taken that over the years. So I have got no guilt in starting to call this nonsense out. I probably should have done it sooner. So it's going to happen. And I'm going to, I'm going to start doing it. Bec- not all the time. But when a line is crossed, I'm going to start calling it out because I think it's dangerous that mainstream media is allowing that sort of nonsense to be put out there where people are getting man of the match when they shouldn't do, where people are being left out of the team of the week when they shouldn't do and good players are being suppressed by lies and inaccuracies. I'm going to start calling it out because I think that's what people want. And I might not have played the game, but... um, I think enough is enough. And I don't think it's just a Man United problem. I think, you know, there are certain players in the Premier League that don't get anywhere near. I mean, sometimes I feel that Mason Mount's a better player than Mo Salah. I know he's not, but I feel like the publicity and the talking about them to the to the casual would think that they are about the same level. And it's a nonsense. You know, that's another example there. Mate, I like Mason Mount. I do like Mason Mount. But if somebody said Mason Mount's better... In fact, give it Gabby Gronglehor in the morning. He'll say Mason Mount's better than Mo Salah. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. You know he would. But I like Mason Mount. But Mo Salah's better than him every day of the week. And I like Declan Rice. And Casemiro's better than him every day of every year. So, you know, it's... Uh, I've, I've been clipped on more time than a tie. I've been clipped on more than a tie. I like that one, Blazing Ace. I do. But look, I've enjoyed the show tonight. I really have. And um, it's good to get it off your chest. It is. It's good to get off your chest. Um, and we'll be doing more of that because I think it's uh, it's important. And you know what, as well, the other thing, the most important thing that I've enjoyed this show for is that time and time again, fan content gets unfairly labelled as negative And it's a nonsense. When players play badly, they get called out for it. When players play well, they get defended. And what have we just spent 45 minutes doing? We've just spent 45 minutes defending our players against pundits who've been having a pop at them unfairly. So how can fan content be called out as negative when mainstream media pundits are lying negatively about our players and we are defending them? Make that make sense. I just think it's wrong and unfair that people who've done so well in a Man United shirt are not getting the credit they deserve because of you know, bad takes, bias, not watching the games, whatever you want to call it, it's wrong. Uh, British media is biased towards British players, so Soham and uh, 
you know, Gianna says they're doing it on purpose to draw eyes. Mate, if that, as somebody who runs two very big uh, communities and has done it for years, if that is the strategy of the intellects in mainstream media is to grow your content with bullshit, you will fall flat on your face because the modern football fan is intelligent, has integrity and will switch off very quickly. You might get the viral clip of what a load of bullshit nonsense that is. And I'm sure Graham soon has got a lot of views for them today, but that won't last because respect will just fall away for that pundit and that station because they'll go, football fans can see through it. What bullshit is he going to come out with next week? Like it becomes a farce. Integrity is surely more important than that. And integrity comes from knowledge and knowledge comes from, you know, analyzing and watching the game. And, and that's clearly lacking here. Um, look, thanks everyone. One thing I would say about most of you lot, the majority of you lot is that you know what you're on about and we've been together for years and, uh, that shows how people hate United. Never talk about City players, says Ray Carl Brown Roy. Really enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, don't forget to check out Boohoo Man. You can get 45%, is it 40% off? Sorry, I'm giving you an extra five. 40% off with the code Goldbridge. Scan the QR code with your phone or go to the link in the description. Um, this is such a lovely hoodie, but they've got loads of stuff you can get on. I could, I could live in this. It's so comfortable. Check it out. Christmas is coming and uh, the prices are fantastic anyway. With 40% off, it's even better. Speak to you all in a bit. Take care. Thanks for watching. And uh, thanks for being my therapy session tonight. I really enjoyed it. Great content, Mark. Watch every day. Keep it up. Well, I'll be back.